Thank you, Kuhirlach. Minister, this afternoon I took a phone call from a woman in my constituency. She rang to tell me her story. She rang to tell me why an extension to maternity leave was so important to her. She was carrying twins. Uh, tragically, she lost one of the babies. She continued with her pregnancy, but it was a very, very difficult pregnancy. She was grieving her baby, um, and the birth itself was very traumatic. That woman has not had access to any counselling. She has not had access to any physiotherapy, and she is both physically and emotionally scarred following that experience. Now, childbirth should be something. Having your baby should be something that you treasure. And this woman is in a very difficult position at the moment. She, what she said to me is that she needs extra time for her body and her mind to heal. And time for her to get the supports that were denied to her through COVID. She is due back in work in September and she doesn't think she's going to be in a position to do it. So she's going to be faced with the choice of looking after herself and her baby and her own health or going back to work. And that's a very difficult choice for any mother to have to make. Now, I learned all about this woman because I picked up the phone and I listened to her story. And I really wish the government had listened to all those women who've been telling their stories over the past few weeks and months. When I listened, it was blatantly obvious that, that this call for an extension to maternity leave, it's not a luxury, it's not something that's nice to have. It is absolutely necessary to support mothers who, for whom this motherhood period has been very traumatic, scary, lonely and stressful. And there are many, many women who have this story to tell. Now, not only did mothers find themselves in challenging situations during maternity leave, they're now facing various barriers returning to work. The roadmap to, roadmap to economic recovery has largely ignored two very important sectors that support women and families in the workforce, childcare and education. Parents, and particularly women, have been doing it up to now in the absence of any cohesive policy and strategy aligning the reopening of creches and schools with that of reopening the economy. With around 60% of childcare facilities taking up government supports, that leaves a question mark over the other 40%. And we're finding that childcare has yet to return to normal capacity as the sector reopens. And it is particularly difficult to find childcare for children under one. Without that adequate childcare, mothers have had to face some very hard decisions. Some have returned to work part-time, others have had to quit altogether, and many are working from home while minding the baby. Others are taking annual leave and parental leave to try to carry them through until childcare is available again. This leads to fears of a two-tiered workforce emerging as women are forced to choose between the domestic and the professional demands in their lives. What new mothers need now is time. Time to catch up on some of the important health checks for both themselves and their babies. Time to source childcare. Extending maternity leave would buy them crucial time to manage their transition back into the workforce. Time which has been taken away from them due to the pandemic. If the government had taken time to listen to all those mothers, to listen to their stories outside the gates of the doll, they would have realised very early on that their proposed parental leave extension extension which government mooted as an alternative to the extension for maternity leave, that is not going to meet the needs of these women or these families. It is not just a simple issue of leave for parents. It is about providing the correct leave at the correct time. And women on maternity leave need, need an extension to be implemented urgently. They don't have the luxury of waiting until budget 2021 for the government to potentially sort this out or for the promise of additional paid parental leave to materialise. Because if or when it does happen, the reality is that it will be too late for many of these mothers. Minister, I'm going to read from two documents for you here today. The first is the First Five Strategy, which is a 10-year plan to improve the lives of babies, young children and their families. In this document, it says that under a new paid parental leave scheme established in 2019, that by 2021, parents will each have individual entitlement to seven weeks of paid parental leave. The second is an excerpt from the Programme for Government, which clearly states that we will extend paid parental leave for parents to allow them to spend more time with their baby in their first year and implement the first five strategy for babies, young children um, and their families. 
So, Minister, despite the promises made in both these two documents, yesterday the government announced an extension of three weeks, and not the five weeks that's announced in this. This document clearly says that by 2021. Sorry? Well, then you're just, uh, what, what you're planning on doing is literally squeezing it in to the last few weeks of 2021. I think it's really disappointing that one of the first initiatives of the, uh, uh, for parents announced by this government is one that actually undercuts, potentially, because I mean, even with this budget, you say you're going to examine it, you're going to look at it, it's a proposal. There are no guarantees with this. Um, the, the two weeks per parent, parent, the amount of paid leave promised to struggling, struggling parents. I think it's also unfortunate and disappointing that you've done it in a way that has completely undermined the campaign that's been led by women who have far more pressing things on their mind and demands on their time than campaigning for, for something that, that really should be provided to them, supports that should be there for them. The same way we supported the SME sector. You know, we, we should be supporting women and their families. And I, I think it was quite a cynical move, to be honest, um, considering especially the soundings over the recent weeks from, from both the former and the current Tishi, that they were going to listen and, and, and uh, take into consideration what these women were talking about and asking for. We should not be playing political games with this important issue. We should want better for women and for mothers and for families in this country. We should recognise the integral role that women and mothers play in society, not only to the economy, but also to the quality of life for children and young people and those who need care. But women continue to be undervalued, underpaid and underrepresented. This has to change and it's time to see COVID as an opportunity to rectify the entrenched inequalities that exist in society and begin reforming how the economy works for mothers, parents and families. And I noted earlier on as well, Minister, that when you spoke about the parental leave, you said that there was going to be three weeks per parent, which means that each family would have six weeks. There are many, many families out there where there is only one parent. And I think that's something that needs to be considered in, in, during the course of this as well. Extending maternity leave and pay is an opportunity for this government to show that they are serious about addressing the barriers facing women. How the government addresses a crisis shows its priorities for the foreseeable future. And parents and mothers in particular have been at, at the crossroads of the numerous state responses to this crisis, a response that has failed to address the reality for mothers and women during this pandemic in terms of childcare, education and health. So I urge the government to acknowledge this first and foremost by extending the maternity leave and pay until November as outlined in this motion. It is time for us all to come together and help mothers hold their babies. Thank you.